I'm Derbert Kirby, and this is I've Got a Secret. I've Got a Secret, brought to you tonight by... New, richer-tasting green milk. The light, fluffy dessert topping that won't wilt. Now, from New York, I've Got a Secret. This week, while Gary Moore is on vacation, here is Henry Morgan. Thank you. Thank you very much. Welcome to I've Got a Secret. And please back away from the set. I have a cold. I don't want you to catch anything. Gary is away on a week's vacation. Bill Cullen is away on a week's vacation. And that brings us to Bess Meyerson. Bess Meyerson is away on a week's vacation. <laughs> and that leaves me with my favorite blonde, Betsy Palmer. <laughs> No, 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 no. No, don't kiss me. I have a cold. Oh, who's a friend of and... Henry Wolf? <laughs> oh, thank you. Next, my favorite blonde, Gretchen Weiler. <laughs> no, don't. I have a cold. I don't, I don't mind. Thank you. <laughs> thank you. Uh, rounding out the panel, and I do mean rounding out, is my favorite brunette. Dorothy Loudon. <laughs> no, I, I have a cold. Uh, I, I have a cold. That's all right, Henry. I've got one, too. Oh. Uh, <laughs> this is a very pleasant show. Um, next, um, my favorite blonde, Faye Emerson. <laughs> Faye! Um... Don't kiss me, I got a cold. All right, Henry. <laughs> and now, may we have our first contestant, please. <laughs> Hi. <laughs> Hi, Penny. Put it right there. Wheel in a little bit. Now, um, will you tell us your names and where you're from? Victor Freeman, Whitestone, New York. Jeff Norrell, Whitestone, New York. Paul Fabinow, Whitestone, New York. Arthur Finman, Whitestone, New York. Andrew Norrell, Whitestone, New York. Andrew Norrell, Whitestone, New York. All right, now if you'll all whisper your secret to me, we'll show it at the same time to everybody at home. <laughs> Battle to help classify the boys' secret, the clue concerns something that they are. And we'll start the game with Betsy. Gentlemen, is this something that you are? Uh, does it have to do with sports? No. Does it have to do with school? No. Does it have to do with anything uh, physical? Yes. yes. Does it have to do with your little heads more than your bodies? No. 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 Does it have to do with uh, any machinery involved in this? No. 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 Uh, uh, 20 down, 60 to go, and we go to Dorothy Loudon. <laughs> no, I'm, uh, do, are you all members of some, uh, something? Yes. 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 Yeah. I, mm, <laughs> I'm through. No. <laughs> um, it, are you, like, gymnasts or something? No. no. It's not that kind of physical. Okay. Club. It's a club. Won something. Do you get medals for whatever you do? Trophies no, or anything? No. You don't. Has it got anything to do with your teeth? No. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I can't think of it. Um, would, it would it do any good to know when you did this? No. You're this all the time. All the As, time you're this. <laughs> they do it a lot of the time. It's 40 down, 40 to go, and it's Gretchen Weiler. They're pretty, but they're dumb. They didn't say a thing. <laughs> they couldn't. We were talking all the time. No, they I mean, right. you are pretty, oh. but you're dumb. You didn't help me at all. Oh. Uh, all right, Gretchen, show them up. Have... Now, I'll help you a lot, Faye. Uh, does, this... <laughs> does this have anything to do with your family? Were your parents involved with this? No, no, no. no. Did it have anything to do with any other person at all? A teacher, possibly, or an instructor no, of some no. sort? Uh, would I have read about this in the newspaper? Was it something quite uh, important? Possibly. No. 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 Never an important thing. Well, that gentleman, that's, that's <laughs> what it is. <laughs> I'm going 
going to direct my questions to the man that thought it was important. Uh, could this have had uh, anything to do with in the city, or did it ha happen in the city of New York? It's not Is it important that really it a thing here? that happened. Something they did. But they are. They are. They it's are something they are. Yeah, well, I, I... Well, Gretchen, you're pretty. Uh, didn't I help pay? Go, Gretchen. You picked on my Betsy and my Dorothy. Uh, well, young Faye. Uh, yes, sir. Uh, young gentlemen, uh, are you uh, related to each other in any possible way? Um, well, some of us, some of us. Some, some of us are related to each other. Uh, does what you do, this physical thing that you are, uh, it is a team, isn't it? Yes. 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 Yeah, you could say that. Uh, does it have anything to do with music? Yes. 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 Ah, you are a quintet. No. <laughs> or a large quartet. <laughs> two, of the, two of the boys just said, that's obvious. Well, if you, are you a, do, you, do you sing or play a musical instrument? Choose one. You do play musical instruments? Yes. yes. Ah! We got it. You've got about half of it, and you're pretty, too. <laughs> boys, tell the ladies what you call yourselves. Steel Bandits. Steel Bandits. You see, oh, you they, they are a calypso band and they play steel drums. Oh. Are we going to hear them? <laughs> Andy, tell how you got started playing steel drums. Well, um, my, my, my father is a social worker and he uses this in Manhattan to prevent, to prevent juvenile delinquency. We got very interested in it and took up the subject. <laughs> I must tell you that Andy was not a delinquent at the time. He was off the street. Well, let's open the curtains and reunite the boys with their instruments, and I think you'll find this pretty fascinating. Let's go. <coughs> now, uh, I suppose lots of people know, maybe some don't, that steel bands like this started in the Caribbean using drums that were left over, oil drums, by the United States Navy, and then the natives cut them down to whatever sizes they wanted. And um, give a little demonstration, Andy, of the scale, huh? Oh, that's only a little simple one. That's a little Here simple one. Here is um, a large scale, which I practice most every day. <laughs> right, right. I should say that, in, in case there's a question in your mind, these are hammered. The, the heads of the drums are hammered into shape until they have the right tone. All right. Here's eight-year-old Andy Norell. And what, what are those? Oh, this is the lead pan. He plays the melody. And uh, what is this called? Well, you didn't tell me. Well, the Steel Bandits. Go. We'll be back with you in just a minute, but first, let's wait. Now, may we have our next contestant, please. Hello. 
Good evening. Would you tell us your name, please, and where you're from? My name is Barbara Cannon, and I'm from Andover, Massachusetts. Colonel, Mrs. Kiernan is vice president of a very interesting organization called the 99s. The 99s is a group of women pilots best known for sponsoring the Powder Puff Derby. Mrs. Kiernan's here as their representative, and Mrs. Kiernan, if you whisper to me, will show the audience what you and the club members share as a secret. <laughs> this is a dinger. This is a dinger. <laughs> Panel, the clue concerns something that these women did as a group. And let's start with Gretchen Weiler. Did, right. Uh, Mrs. Kiernan, would you tell me if what you did made the newspapers? Yes. Uh, in the last uh, week or so? Oh, it wouldn't have been in the last week in New York City. Was it, did it happen in the last week? No. Would it be important that I know it when, uh, during a certain time? No. No. Uh, did this thing that you do, uh, the, did the 99 pilot women pilots all participate in it? Was it something yes. you did together? Yes. Uh, is it something that uh, was done in this part of the country? Would it help no. me to know where? No. That's 20 down, 60 to go, and Miss Fay Emerson, if you will. Uh, Mrs. Kiernan, uh, was this a physical thing you did where you were using planes? No. Uh, did you by any chance uh, enlarge the 99 to make it 100? Did you get a new member or something? No. Uh, you're, like you didn't elect a man or something? No. Uh, did you, uh, well, if it had nothing to do with planes, then perhaps it had something to do with uh, what you wear. Is, was it oh, something no. about your uniforms? Or, no. Did you set up new rules for the Powder Puff Derby? No. That's 40 down, 40 to go, and Betsy well, Palmer. You, you both raised your eyebrows a little bit when Faye said it didn't have to do with planes. Does it have to do with aircraft of a sort? Yes. But not necessarily aeroplanes. Is that a question? I, I don't... I mean, does it have to do, say, for instance, with um, uh, balloons instead of aeroplanes? No. No. It has to do with aeroplanes. Yes. With gliders? No. Did this happen on board the plane? No. Airplanes? No. Is that, are you... Have you designed an aeroplane? No. As a whole? Group? It's 60 down, 20 to go. I told you, this is a real rough one. <laughs> Dorothy Loudon. Why? Hello there. <laughs> what, was it in a hangar? <laughs> uh, Never get off Honestly, the ground. Oh, was wait, it? You're not answering. Uh, you well, I, I don't... You said, was it in a hangar? Was it. What they, what they did. Oh, oh, what they no. did. Oh, no. Oh, well, there is, there is an object involved. Yeah. In this. It's, yeah. A, it's an aircraft thing of some kind. It's not an airplane, though. It's not a dirigible. It is an airplane. It is an airplane. Why does... I, I don't know why uh, um, I should help you, but you keep saying it isn't an airplane. I don't know why you say that. Oh, you weren't in the airplane. That's what you said. <laughs> That's, right. That's right. I knew I'd get... <laughs> they weren't in the airplane. No. Oh. Uh, you were just they standing were around looking at it. <laughs> They flew outside of the airplane. No. You invented something. No. <laughs> and you refused to go up in it. You told me no. <laughs> well, we've lost the $80. And I think Mrs. Kiernan will be glad of that. Panel, Mrs. Kiernan and her fellow members of the 99s have been collecting trading stamps for the past five months. And the secret is that they collected enough stamps to be able to buy an airplane. <laughs> You'll see. Wait. It'll come up. We'll explain all. <laughs> Mrs. Kiernan, how many stamps does it take to buy a plane? It took three million green stamps. Nine. Now, unless you think this is just a whim, Mrs. Kiernan, would you tell us what inspired this project? Yes. In our organization, we have a member who's the only woman pilot in Korea. She became a member when she first, when she went to college in the United States. And she went back to Korea after finishing college and wanted to teach other women to fly. But she didn't have an airplane. So the 99s in the United States decided that we would save the stamps and buy Captain Kyung Oh Kim an airplane, which we did. Oh, 
Colonel, here's a, a picture of the plane that the 99s bought with their trading stamps to send to Korea. And I'm sure you'll be delighted to know that sitting in our audience tonight is Captain Kyung Oh Kim, captain in the Korean Air Force. And Captain Kim, would you be good enough to take a bow, please? Let's see what. Well, Mrs. Chairman, do you mean to tell me that in the, the catalog that you get that shows you yeah. what you can get, there is a picture of an airplane yeah. and you said, let's get it? Uh, no, I, I don't really know whether this is true or not, that there's a picture of an airplane in the catalog, but we arranged oh, to... Oh, you arranged to, yes, be able to, buy to buy the airplane with the, the trading stamp. You want to do anything badly enough, I guess you can get it done. Yeah. I have a feeling that somewhere in our audience is a housewife who perhaps would like to see what three million stamps look like. I would. If you'd open the curtains, please. Oh. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> to make this um, um, a little clearer, those are 2,500 filled books. 2,500 you know, filled books. I've got 10 books at home, and I'd like to donate them in case you need some gas or something. <laughs> <laughs> I really would like to give you Thank you. I think <laughs> Mrs. Oh, Kiernan, God. many thanks to you. Captain Kim, thank you so much for coming. Your prize money waiting off stage. Thank you. <laughs> now it's time to meet our uh, special guest for tonight. I give you two of the tallest words in show business, Derward Kirby. <laughs> You have deer tracks on your face. <laughs> the show had a very warm opening. <laughs> I was watching backstage. Uh, yeah. What do you have in mind for this evening, Senator? Well, I have... Uh... <laughs> Governor, I have a very interesting problem, I think, that will intrigue these four lovely ladies here on the panel. Uh -huh. Because they are going to be working with four ladies that I picked from the studio audience prior to going on the air. And I would like for you to meet uh, these ladies right now. Sure, bring them right out. Now, these will be your partners, you see? So, uh, Betsy, first of all, here's your partner. This is Mrs. Helen Groves. Be right, right in back you of you. And uh, Dorothy, I'd like for you to meet Mrs. Ann Heckler. Next, Gretchen, your partner will be Miss Margie Fenley. And finally, Faye, will you please meet Mrs. Lorette Carney. Well, uh, sir, you apparently have four teams of ladies. What are they going to do? Well, they're going to do, Henry, what uh, women love to do, namely <laughs> shop. They go shopping, right? They love to shop more than anything in the world. We all know that. Now, each of the girls on our panel, you see, will help her teammates select some clothes, which the ladies standing there, you get to keep these clothes, the ones that you select. With the help of your partner, you get to keep these things. Well, I think that's the most generous. Is there more? Yeah, no, that's all. We'll, we'll get I to it right now. I think that's a marvelous thing. Open the curtains, please. Open we'll curtains. look at the merchandise. If, uh... First of all, now, will you all gather around over here, all of you ladies? <laughs> Betsy, you and your partner right. stand here. The other four round over right in the back. back. And we start with footwear, ladies. Now, <laughs> what is the plot? Listen very carefully. Uh, you must help your teammates, of course. Yes. Now, Wait, uh, don't start yet. No, 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 no. Not until I blow very la whistle. You very see? interesting rule. Okay. Don't worry about size. We'll make corrections after the show. But there's just one little thing I want to mention. All the shoes in this bin sell for $5 or less, except one pair. One pair is worth $60. Are you ready? You have one minute to make a selection. Can we just go all over? All over. Starting, no biting. Here we go. All right. Hi, 
time's a-wasting. What does he look like they've been warm? Up. Now hold the hold the shoes. You can't select any more. Right. Now let's see. I you have you have this pair, yeah. Betsy. I see this pair. That's a nice five dollar pair you have, and yours too. Those are five dollars. These are five dollars. Oh, let's see. No, 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 no. No more selecting. We just discovered our heels dollars. are bad. Five dollars. Five too bad. You all selected uh, five dollar shoes. Listen. And you picked these things up once. Yeah, it had a it had a bow. Uh, I was trying to keep my. Oh, bow. Well, bows are pretty. No, 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 wait a minute. Wait a minute. What color is the bow? You're talking about mix them up. I know. Oh, help me. Here they are. Oh, I got them in my head and I put them down. I know you did. So did Dorothy. She picked these up once. These are worth $60. Too bad, ladies. You're kidding. Those are worth $60. Keep the shoes that you have. Keep the shoes that you have. Now, stand back. Stand back now, ladies. Wait, part two. Part two, ladies. Part two. Yeah. Here comes part two. Here comes part two. Now we go. Uh oh, excuse me, Ray. Now we go to the ladies' hat. Now listen to this. Now here, ladies, hold it down to a roar. Uh, all of the hats on this table are worth five dollars. By the way, all of all of these uh, uh, all of this apparel comes from Orbach here in New York. Now the hats are worth five dollars or under, but there is one hat on this table worth thirty-five dollars. You have one minute again. Help each other. Here we go. Try them on. Try them on. That's it. You like it? They're they're lost. Try them on, don't forget. Ten seconds. Ten seconds. Ten seconds. All right, time's up. Now, put put the hat of your choice on your head, please. Put the hat of your choice on your head. We'll start from this end and work around. These hats, you know, are five dollars. Five, five. Hello there. Five dollars or more. Now that's your hat. Now let's see. That's yours. Let's see. Uh, move up here so the camera can see. You. That's pretty with the. That's right in. That's your hat. I see. And that's that's yours there. Faye, that's your selection. That's your selection. Yours, Gretchen. Too bad, lady. Here's the hat right here. Part three, ladies. Here we go. Part three. Watch the table. Yeah, you keep the hat. Put the hat on your arm. Part three is, um, part three now, if we will open up, uh, the Travers. Huh? Yes, indeed. Open up the Travers. Here we go. Now, part three. Now, well, ladies, if you'll excuse me. Now we come to the dresses. This is the real stuff here now. A whole rack full of dresses. All right? Now, listen to this. These dresses cost $20 and under, except for one dress that cost $170. Again, you have 60 seconds. Pitch in. Here we go. You can hold them up to you, you know, you know, like you, you do, you know, when you see if you like them or not. All right, now let's see. This is the, the dress of your choice. You want to turn around and hold that up? Yeah. I tell you what we can do. Uh, I'm a little confused about the time here. I think that we better do an announcement and then announce the winner afterwards. All right? I think Come right back to you after this announcement. I think that. Tom. No. Okay, right. somebody does have the winner. All okay. right, there are the dresses. Here's the hundred. Oh, yeah. Thank you, panel. Thank you, ladies. Thank you, Orbach. Gary will be back next week. Thank you, and good. I'm Derbert Kirby, and this is I've Got a Secret. I've Got a Secret, brought to you tonight by.
new, richer-tasting green wilt. The light, fluffy dessert topping that won't wilt. Now, from New York, I've got a secret. This week, while Gary Moore is on vacation, here is Henry Morgan. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you very much. Welcome to I've Got a Secret. And please back away from the set. I have a cold. I don't want you to catch anything. Gary is away on a week's vacation. Bill Cullen is away on a week's vacation. And that brings us to Beth Meyerson. Beth Meyerson is away on a week's vacation. <laughs> and that leaves me with my favorite blonde, Betsy Palmer. No, 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 no. No, don't kiss me. I have a cold. Oh, who's afraid of and... Henry Wolfe? <laughs> oh, thank you. Next, my favorite blonde, Gretchen Weiler. <laughs> don't, don't, I have a cold. I don't mind. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, rounding out the panel, and I do mean rounding out as my favorite brunette, Dorothy Loudon. <laughs> no, I, I have a cold. Uh, I, I have a cold. That's all right, honey. I've got one, too. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> this is a very pleasant show. Um, next, um, my favorite blonde, Faye Emerson. Kiss me, I got a cold. All right, Henry. <laughs> so, uh, and now, may we have our first contestant, please. 